Today I'll introduce you to another past tense. First, a quick review of the tenses we've learned. We learned that the present tense of kaufen, for example, is Ich kaufe, du kaufst, er kauft, wir kaufen, ihr kauft, und sie kaufen. Most verbs have similar endings. You take the en off the infinitive at the top, that leaves you with the stem of the verb kauf, and then you add those endings. As to meaning, Ich kaufe das Hemd can be translated as I buy the shirt, I do buy the shirt, or I am buying the shirt. Now, I am buying or I'm buying the shirt is what we call in English present progressive, but German doesn't have that tense. Just the regular present tense covers all three of these translations, as we've learned. Now, we learned that the past tense of kaufen is Ich habe gekauft, du hast gekauft, er hat gekauft, wir haben gekauft, ihr habt gekauft, and sie haben gekauft. Kaufen is a weak verb. Its past participle ends in the letter T. That shows you that it's a weak verb. And most verbs take haben as a helping verb to make this past tense. Ich habe das Hemd gekauft. I bought the shirt. Notice that the past participle is at the end of the sentence. As to meaning, ich habe das Hemd gekauft can be translated as I bought the shirt, I did buy the shirt, or I have bought the shirt. We also learn the future tense. To form it, we need the verb werden. It means to become by itself. But with another verb in its infinitive form, it means I will do something. And we learn that werden is conjugated this way. Ich werde, du wirst, er wird, wir werden, ihr werdet, and sie werden. For example, ich werde das Hemd kaufen. Notice the other verb, in this case kaufen, goes at the end of the sentence. Or at the end of the clause, if there's a comma, perhaps. Now, it could be translated as I will buy the shirt or I shall buy the shirt. Either one. Now, it's time to introduce you to another past tense, sometimes called the simple past, the narrative past, the preterite, or the imperfect. Let's see how to form it for weak verbs. For most verbs being weak, this tense is formed like this. First, the stem of the verb is kelf, as we know. And to that, we add the letters te to all of the forms. Now, we're almost done. The ish form is done, and so is the Arizian s form. In this tense, they are the same. The ish form is always the same for every verb as the ers and s form. So all we have to do is add st to make the do form, n to make the vir form, t for the ear form, and n for the z form, and we have it. Repeat all of these forms after me. Ich kaufte, du kauftest, er kaufte, wir kauften, ihr kauftet, sie kauften. Now, with verbs whose stem ends in a D or a T, we need an extra E for pronunciation's sake. For example, look at the verb warten. When you take the EN off of warten, you have the stem ending in a T. So we need to add that extra E first before adding the TE. So here's what you end up with. It sounds strange a little bit. It's ich wartete, du wartetest, er wartete, wir warteten, ihr wartetet, Und sie warteten. I know it sounds strange, almost as though you are stuttering a bit. Repeat them all after me. Ich wartete. Du wartetest. Er wartete. Wir warteten. Ihr wartetet. Sie warteten. So, here are the two past tenses. They can both mean I bought the shirt. Ich habe das Hemd gekauft or ich kaufte das Hemd. The difference is that the one on the top is what people use in conversations. The one on the bottom is found mostly in written forms. If you were to read a novel, a fairy tale, perhaps an article in the newspaper, etc., the imperfect or narrative past, the new one at the bottom, is found throughout. That's why the one on the top is the one you need to learn the most, the one you would use the most conversationally, and the one we've been learning all along for that reason. For now, let me introduce one important, slightly irregular weak verb that is almost always in this new tense when referring to the past. It's the verb haben. The way to say I had, repeat after me, ich hatte, du hattest, er hatte, wir hatten, ihr hattet, sie hatten. Notice what makes it irregular is that the letter B from haben is not in there at all. It's gone. It's been replaced with another T. So again, here are the two past tenses. Ich habe ein Auto gehabt. Ich hatte ein Auto. 
They both mean I had a car. The difference is that even in conversation, Germans prefer to use the new one, the one at the bottom. It's much easier to say. And haben is a commonly used verb. The one at the top is more difficult, and it has haben twice in a sense, right? Haben as the helping verb, haben as the past participle. Let's practice haben in this simple past tense. I'll make a simple statement with haben in the present tense, and you'll change it to the past tense. For example, here I'd say, Ich habe ein Auto, I have a car, and you change it to, Ich hatte ein Auto. This should be easy. I'll read the present tense and pause for you to make the past. Du hast eine Katze. Du hattest eine Katze. Er hat einen Hund. Er hatte einen Hund. The word for a date, like I have a date tonight, is die Verabredung. Say that word, die Verabredung. Again, die Verabredung. So, we have a date. Wir haben eine Verabredung. Make it the past tense. Wir hatten eine Verabredung. Good. Say the word for money, das Geld. Again, das Geld. Ihr habt kein Geld means you plural, informal, you guys have no money. Make it you had no money. Ihr hattet kein Geld. Good. Say the word for time, die Zeit. Again, die Zeit. So sie haben keine Zeit means they have no time or perhaps you formal have no time. Make it the past tense. Sie hatten keine Zeit. Good. Say the word for luck. Das Glück. Again, das Glück. So, ich habe Glück means I have luck, meaning I'm lucky. Change it to I had some luck. Ich hatte Glück. Good job. Now a reminder, you can still use the other past tense saying, ich habe Glück gehabt. It's just that most Germans prefer to use this new tense, the imperfect or the narrative past of the verb haben. Good. Auf Wiedersehen.